this class is broken. But before we get into that, let's get some baseline information for the audience. Each class in Lost Ark has two variants. Typically one is slower and hits harder, and the other is quicker and doesn't hit as hard. This isn't the same across every class, but seems to be the trend amongst the majority of them. The second piece of information is that there is an armor in the game called Relic Sets that are used by basically everyone to enhance a certain playstyle. The easiest example is that the Entropy Set enhances back attack style classes by increasing your damage and crit chance, with its downside being that it is essentially useless if you don't hit the back. Now that you understand the fundamentals, we can get started. Welcome to the video, we'll be going over the top 4 easiest and best classes to play in Lost Ark for new and returning players, but also for those who maybe want a solid alt to play with on the side and don't want to overly invest time and effort learning a new playstyle. Each class listed is one that I have personally played and still play, and my credentials being that I have about 6000 plus hours in the game. I'm not a pro or master at this game by any means, but do have the experience to relay this form of information. I will not be going over the exact playstyle and builds for said classes, but would relay to the Nexus, a community made website that has experts on each class breaking down anything you need to know and an easy to read document. Do stick around to the end for two bonus classes that I personally haven't played but still consider worthy to try out for this upcoming update. First on the list is the Paladin. It is the only support on this list, but it is great for learning the basics of being a support in Lost Ark but also for learning the game as a new player. There is a giant support shortage in the game at the moment so you can take advantage of that and skip a majority of potential gatekeeping you may receive as a DPS character. Typically if one is gatekeeping, they check either the roster level or card set to determine how new you are. But with supports, the only thing they really check is if you are 5x3, which is a term that refers to if you have 5 fully tiered up engravings for the fight ahead. With the new passes that are coming and basically always active at this point, you'll be getting 5x3 for free on the character you choose to build with said pass. Taking this benefit one step further, many raid mechanics are pretty lenient on supports and even more specifically the Paladin. The Paladin's damage buffs are just click and it's spread to your party members, as long as they are within a certain radius, but this is pretty large. Additionally, its shields work roughly the exact same way. There is one move that requires actual placement for decent shielding moments, but as you get better at the game and class, this is where your skill with the class will enhance the gameplay. Supports also have this thing called a brand which after hitting the boss with said move will be marked. This mark will enhance the party's damage as well. Its ultimate is also super easy. You press V, click, and then you jump into the air and give a big shield to your party, but also gain full meter to begin a blessed aura, which is another attack buff slash healing moment. With the upcoming bounce patch, the ult is made even easier as this initially had to hit a boss or mob to gain the meter, but in the future patch, this will not need to hit anything. To be honest, most average supports in the game are mediocre, but the party is happy enough to gain damage and healing from you regardless of how little and just want to be around you to gather your yearning buff. Yearning being the relic set that supports use in this game, which when active will give you a giant white circle illuminating around you, giving buffs to party members with it. Because the Paladin's easy to play, it allows you to focus more on learning the raid whilst in a fight, allowing you to progress at a faster rate than a learning DPS, but also allows you to gain experience and knowledge that you may not have had if you ran at the same raid with a DPS character. Because of its extreme ease of play, ease of getting into content at all stages of progression, and its ease of getting good learning experience, experience, it is the first character mentioned in this list. If this class or learning pace is of interest, be sure to check out the Nexus for more detailed breakdown of its playstyle. The next on the list is the newly released Aeromancer class. The class's two variants are called Drizzle and Wind Fury. Wind Fury is the swiftness variant and is the one that I'm recommending for you to try out. The Aeromancer is the one of the newer classes to have released, and because of that, it has some, and if not, the best animations in the game. The class has many reasons for you to play it as a new or relaxed player, with its greatest being its ease of play and its provided synergies are top tier, making it a step above in matchmaking lobbies. Wind Fury's main build takes the Hallucination set, which basically outputs a high crit rate which is great for swiftness based characters who may be lacking crit. Its playstyle consists of a skill that does relatively low damage but creates an air shield that you then follow up with a skill that uses the shield to increase its damage, which results in you just having to think about making sure you hit the prep skill before the damage skill and damage away. Three out of four classes in this list are swiftness based classes, which means they are always throwing attacks with low cooldowns to help you constantly engage. I believe most of the swiftness based classes run the Conviction and Judgment rune pairing, which when hit reduces the 
the cooldowns and mana of the moves used in its window, which allows you to hit even more. But learning how to use these runes effectively isn't mandatory, and using them efficiently just enhances your playstyle. Now onto the synergy side of things. All classes in the game provide a party-wide buff, when activated that is. Because of this, a lot of people will opt to take someone who may be less geared or experienced to enhance the damage numbers they generate. By far, typically, the most sought out synergy is the crit synergy, which just so happens to be what Aromancer provides. But it also makes it one step further, separating itself from the pack. Wind Fury specifically has a meter that once filled up can be activated with the Z key, and a windy circle will encircle you. Any party member that is inside this circle will gain movement and attack speed, and in the upcoming balance patch, this circle will become even bigger, becoming easier for party members to be inside and use it. This synergy pairing is top tier, so matching that with its ease of play puts it on my list of top classes to play for new players or just someone who wants to bring a pretty relaxing alt into any raid. Additionally, the Drizzle variant is slightly harder to play but outputs more damage, so if you get to a point where you think you want to enhance your gameplay, you can switch over to its spec form to try a more challenging variant. If this class intrigues you, once again, check out the Nexus for more detailed breakdown by the experts. Next on the list is one of my favorite alts, the Sharpshooter. I made this class as my first ever alt back in March after release, and it had a pretty bad community consensus until almost a year ago when a balance patch released and completely revamped the playstyle and its damage output. Now this class is in the top tier levels of damage output with specific focus on the Death Strike variant, which is considered the much harder variant to play. I'll be focusing on the Loyal Companion variant for this video, but like the Aromancer Breakdown, you can look to hone your skills and learn the raids and the game, then look to switch over engravings to the harder playstyle, but with arguably the highest average damage output currently in the game. In my opinion, this class is the true distance marksman class in the game. As long as you can get over the fact that you're using a bow while a class like the Scouter has a machine gun and a drone that drops carpet bombs, you'll be fine. Sharpshooters have the ability to stand at a great distance to get their damage off, which is very nice as you'll come to learn that up close and specifically the front and back are constant SWAT zones by bosses making them infuriating to play in that proximity. Sharpshooter can just ignore that and play at a safe distance, with its snipe ability outputting a majority of its overall damage. Now there are a few different builds in the Loyal Companion variant, with the Swiftness variant being its old main build. That build still works if you're into the constant attacking playstyle, but I offer you the slower spec version that does more damage for less effort. This is because the Loyal Companion engraving consists of utilizing your Silver Hawk as a damage method. The damage of this bird directly scales with how much spec you have on that class. And here's the best news the bird auto attacks. The bird has an auto attack that will hit every few seconds and a target attack that will use when you use your Z key while aiming your mouse to have the bird do a swarming attack. Snipe is a majority of your damage, but the auto attacking bird also outputs a decent percentage as well. What this means is even if you are missing your main attacks, the loyal companion variant will always have a baseline amount of damage on the boss from its bird, as long as you're roughly in the area of the boss. So pairing that with the fact that you can attack from extremely far away, it makes it a very chill playstyle for casual vets and great for new players wanting to learn and contribute to the raid. Although I said the other variant is arguably the number one damage output in the game, Loyal Companion is still up there, which is super high for character that is relatively super easy to play. In regards to synergy, it provides damage buffs, which is considered one of the worst synergies, but it also provides movement speed when its bird is out, which puts it above all the other damage synergy classes in the game. It used to be super hard to get into lobbies with this class, but with this revamp, most lobbies should know of its ease of high damage output regardless of skill level, making it super easy to get accepted. For all these reasons, this is why the Sharpshooter class is on this list, but also why it is personally my favorite on on it. If this class interests you, check out the Nexus post to learn the nitty gritty from the community experts. Now, what you've all been waiting for. This isn't a list ranking four through one with one being the best. It's just three classes I recommend and one class that I recommend and just happens to be the best. Slayer is the female variant of the Berserker, but doesn't require red dust, which is essentially a skill that has to land to hit crit chance and damage to be optimal. This makes Slayer leagues easier and more fun to play than its gender counterpart. The class variant I'm recommending is the Predator option. Punisher is the spec variant and will definitely take more skill and patience to output its giga amount of burst damage, 
But like Sharpshooter, its Swift variant is still a monster, and lots would even argue it's better since it's much easier and consistent to output its massive damage. It is my current belief that Smilegate, the company behind the game, is using Slayer to seduce new players into the game. This class outputs stupid amounts of damage, relatively easy, but Smilegate hasn't touched it since its release. Its spec variant got a small nerf, but Predator did not after two patches now, which could be unheard of, but I think this is on purpose. This class is easier to play, cheaper to build, and has the only body type in the game that is notably bustier than the rest. For a game that has a rough start for new players typically, the Slayer seems to negate most of these issues, and I think that's by design. And that is why I am listing it as the number one best, easiest class to get into the game with. As mentioned previously, the Predator variant is a swiftness class, so it has extreme mobility. This is further enhanced that the meta build for it includes a double dash, which means you have a fast cooldown spacebar and a double dash to get to safety super easy. Now let's say you happen to get hit anyways. The warrior race of class all have the most HP and defense in the game, so you're super safe. Now, something different than the rest of the classes listed that one could say is a negative is that it is the only positional based attacker listed, meaning it uses the entropy set making it a back attacker. Well, here's the thing, informed viewer. Besides its superior mobility, which makes back attacking relatively the most simple of all the back attackers, the raw damage this class outputs, even if it misses its back attack, is still huge. This isn't me saying you don't need to hit the back attacks. It is me saying, though, that missing anything from actually getting the buff isn't the worst. The only basic info you need to know about the class besides that is that the Predator functions with a meter that you have to fill at the start of the battle, which is relatively easy with a few moves. As soon as it's filled, you're done. Hit Z to activate your enhanced mode and now you're faster and do more damage. Make sure to constantly be hitting as this generates stacks and keeps your meter up. Eventually, the meter will run out, but depending on how much stacks you've gained whilst in the mode will determine how long you are out of form, typically ranging from 4 to 12 seconds. Then it instantly refills and you press Z again and you do it over. This is once again another class that is enhanced by the Conviction Judgment runes, but as stated previously, this isn't required but definitely enhances your gameplay. This is the first time mentioning utility to a raid, and by that I mean its ability to assist certain mechanics throughout the raids, called Stagger, Destruction, or Counters. The Predator Slayer brings top 3 amounts of utility to a raid, especially when factoring in its damage output. The current meta builds contain 3 destruction skills, some of the high stagger, and one of the easiest counters to land, with one build even having 2 counters available. This is the Swiss Army Knife of Lost Art classes. Its only real negative is its party synergy is damage, but with all the other factors at play, that is hardly a downside. With the next Express Pass coming, it is expected to bring a vast amount of new Predator Slayers into the game, so you can be like the many jumping in with this overpowered monster. If this class intrigues you, check out the Nexus for more of a deep dive into everything about it. Before we end, I did mention some bonus picks. These two picks aren't ones that I personally have played before, but if the previous four haven't sold you, these may. The first pick is the Gunlancer. This is a happy medium between both a support and a DPS character. It is a higher DPS option with the red variation, but my pick would be the blue initially. It is the only true tank in the game and has large shields and provides them to its party as well. It can immune most damage and pushes with its rotations and is one of the hottest picks in Party Fighter as it provides insane amounts of synergy in regards to shielding, back attack and front damage, and in non-Legion raids, it has the ability to taunt and pull aggro, sometimes skipping hard mechanics. The second pick in this bonus section is the newly releasing Soul Eater. This is an extremely mobile class with super high amounts of damage. It is the newest release to Lost Ark, so it has the best animations in the game. In regards to playstyle, I believe it offers a decent utility, but its high damage output as a non-positional class makes it a powerhouse and interesting for this list. If you're at all interested in the Grim Reaper with the Scythe combo or Gun Lancer, definitely check out their respective Nexus posts for more in-depth details. Now that we've got to the end, I hope one or more of these picks was at least enticing enough for you to check out and enjoy yourself. I think any of these picks would be great for anyone of any skill level to try out and hope that I've aided in preventing any grief related to starting a new class in Lost Ark. If there's a class you believe I missed, let me know in the comments below, and if you need any additional help, leave a comment and I can help you out as best as I can. If there's enough intrigue, I could make a video potentially breaking them down individually, but to be honest, there's already so many good video guides related to it that I would encourage you to look into if reading through the Nexus isn't your thing. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, goodbye.